Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories and information found here can be found at our website at www.indiancountrynews.com, where your online membership or do donation helps support the development of this television station. Here are some of the uh, news articles for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. A former high school classmate of a woman whose body was found in 1987 in Yakima County, Washington, Orchard has been arrested in the case after evidence in the case underwent DNA testing. Janice Marie Wilson, 20 of Toppenish, a member of the Yakima Nation, disappeared on August 5, 1987, making her one of the more than dozen women who mysteriously died in and around the reservation between 1980 and 1993. Last year, detectives persuaded the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs to use grant money to submit evidence in the case for DNA testing at a private Texas lab. The evidence included clothing scattered around the scene and other material recovered from Wilson's body. That information then was given to the Washington State Patrol Lab, which ran the data through a state and national database and found a match. Authorities arrested 41-year-old Samuel Posada, now of Hermiston, Oregon, during mid-January when he showed up to check in with his probation officer. Posada, who grew up, uh, who grew up in Toppenish, is now awaiting extradition. Representative David Wu of Oregon says he plans to push incoming leaders of the U.S. Department of the Interior to reject a $389 million tribal casino in the Columbia River George Gorge of Oregon. As Colorado Senator Ken Salazar began confirmation hearings to become Interior Secretary, Wu and other environmentalists restated their opposition last week to the plan of the Confederated Tribes of the Warm Springs for a casino at Cascade Locks on the Gorge. The Interior Department must approve the casino. Wu said that the casino, hotel, parking lot, and highway interchange would spoil the gorge's natural resources. Warm Spring leaders have said the casino will boost the tribe's economy and private opportunities to the state. A Rushville, Nebraska man has pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter for a crash that killed two residents of the Pine Ridge Reservation who were walking along the highway to White Clay, Nebraska. In exchange for Timothy Holtz's plea in federal court, a second count of involuntary manslaughter and one count of hit and run resulting in death were dismissed. Authorities says Holtz was drunk when he struck 26-year-old Colony Randall of Wombly and 22-year-old Robert Whirlwind Horse of Manderson on August 27th last year. He then fled the scene. The 60-year-old Holtz faces up to eight years in prison when he is sentenced on March 30th. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs has proposed land swaps to settle a 30-year-old dispute between Native Hawaiians and the state over income from former Hawaiian Kingdom lands. Its legislation would transfer two state-owned properties to OHA this year that were valued at about $127 million and almost eight, 19 acres in Kakeu, Honolulu, and 80 acres along the Banyan Drive Resort in Hilo on Big Island. Next year, the measure would transfer yet another to-be-determined state parcel worth almost $73 million. Office of Hawaiian Affairs officials said at a news conference that the measure would reasonably settle the lengthy dispute as the state grapples with a budget deficit. Last year, a similar settlement bill was stymied in the legislature over objections from some Native Hawaiian members of the community where a number of activists differ on strategy and tactics when it comes to relationships with the state of Hawaii. A judge has agreed to hear a challenge to the federal government's decision to take 18 acres of upstate New York land into trust for the Oneida Nation of New York. The hearing will be held February 25th in Albany before U.S. District Court Justice Lawrence Kahn. 
State and local officials have criticized the transfer of the former U.S. Air Force land, saying they were never notified in advance of the decision. Federal officials say there was no need to notify anyone because the law requires putting excess military land residing within Indian reservations into trust for the tribe. Khan is overseeing seven separate lawsuits now filed over the U.S. Department of Interior's decisions to put 13,000 acres into trust for the Oneida Nation of New York. Two three-month-old girls believed to be the first known American Indian conjoined twins were separated last week during a three-hour surgery in Oklahoma City. The twins were joined at the chest, and the separation process involved their livers and other tissue. Doctors have said the girls have a good chance at survival because they have separate hearts and shared no major blood vessels. The babies, Presley and Kylie Wells, were listed in critical condition at Children's Hospital at OU Medical Center, where they have been cared for since their birth October 25th. Doctors learned of the rare condition during a routine ultrasound in their mother's 20th week of pregnancy. The babies were born at 34 weeks VA cesarean section at the Children's Hospital. Navajo Nation President Joe Shirley Jr. attended the opening session of the 49th Arizona Legislative Session last week to greet the Navajo Nation's newest representatives and to bid a fond farewell to a woman he calls a friend, a sister, and the mother of the people. The president was the guest on the legislative floor of Senator Albert Hale and District 2 representatives Tom Chabin and Christopher Deshaies. Moments earlier, he greeted Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano before she was introduced to the joint session to present her final State of the State address and say a bittersweet farewell to Arizona and the legislature. Afterward, President Shirley and Senator Hale visited privately for 20 minutes with the governor. Both expressed how fine a friend to Arizona's native people and to the Navajos she has been during her six years in public office and how much her personal leadership will be missed. She said because of her new job, she doubted she would be able to attend this year's Navajo Nation Fair Parade, which would be the first time in 10 years she has missed it. Napolitano was confirmed as Secretary of Homeland of Security on January 20th following the inauguration of President Barack Obama. If you're thinking about heading out on the powwow circuit this upcoming weekend, here are a few of your options that we have been notified of. Upcoming is the Thunderbird powwow on January 24th at the National Museum of the American Indian in New York, New York. The Honoring Traditions powwow January 24th and 25th at the Fairfield County Fairgrounds in Lancaster, Ohio. The Turtle Drum Winter Powwow, January 21st, uh, 24th at the United Methodist Church in Rockville, Connecticut. And the Northwestern State University Powwow at the NWS campus in Nachitoches, Louisiana. Louisiana. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank our broadcasters and underwriters for helping us with this broadcast and our digital mall partners, powwows.com, nativeview.com, and our newest partner, nishtv.com. Enjoy yourself and see you soon again.